All right, leading us into the next part of our NFC East deep dive uh, would be our guy Austin Abbott at Austin Abbott on the Twitters at Austin Abbott FF. Get it right with uh, eight two B's and two T's, motherfucker. That's right. We appreciate you, man. So uh, tell us about about uh, where can we find you? Can we find you on all social media platforms? Yes, sir. Uh, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, uh, the Stunt. The it's stunt. A new yeah, the, the stunt. Stunt, stunting like yeah, his daddy. Pretty, pretty, pretty much anywhere. <laughs> All right, man. Well, let us. What's up with these uh, commanders? commanders? Yeah, commanders. Man, they they were. It was a roller coaster. They were all over, up and down last year. Week one, they knocked off the Jags in dramatic fashion. I don't know if you guys remember, but you know Trevor Lawrence after like a really really disappointing rookie yeah. campaign comes <laughs> oh, yeah. back. Comes back, and I'm a huge T-Law fan. Uh, comes back year two, looked good, and then they, they knocked them off in dramatic fashion. And, and you know the Commanders going up 1-0, like you know that that that's exactly what they want to see. And then they dropped four games consecutively, one and four. It, it kind of felt like the season was over at that point. I understand there's still a lot of time left, but uh, they ended up knocking off Philly. Do you guys remember that Philly was eight and zero? I think it was a Monday night game. It, I mean, it was a huge upset. You guys mm-hmm. remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, was that their crazy. only loss in the uh, regular they, season? No, they lost to Dallas with Gardner Minshew later in the year. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Like they the did, last they week. decided not to bring back. Yeah, yeah. They may have lost Hurts. two or three games, but um, they had camp, commanders were all over the place. They had a tie with the Giants, and then like they play, they had a bye week, and they played the Giants again, got knocked off. I, I believe they finished 8-8-1. Eight, eight, and one. It, They were just all over the place. They're, and really, it stemmed from their quarterback situation. Uh, to be honest with you guys, it feels like now moving forward for the 2023 season, Sam Howell is kind of on like a one-year rental, like a prove-it deal. Like he's, It's almost like the Desmond Ritter situation. If they are not good, if they do not produce, if they don't show that they have a promising future, they are on a short leash, both of those guys. And, and I think that we, yeah, they could literally be backups or uh, potentially you know, out of the league in, in a year. Uh, maybe not Desmond Ritter, but, but Sam Howell, Man, it, it just feels like it's now or never. He has to produce, you know. Yeah. I, who, who, they signed Jacoby Brissett to right um, strong uh, late round, late late round superflex startup pickup right there. Dude, I, I agree. I, I, I'm actually a fan of at his ADP, especially in superflex. I, I like where the value's at, but you know, we'll see. There's not a whole lot we can say about Sam Howell. Like it's it's just more of we will see he played week 17 or was it week 18 now and he looked pretty good they knocked off dallas didn't they crush dallas like it, it was a blowout uh, not that the game probably mattered for dallas at that point i want to talk about the running back so it's you know so much changes in a year man remember the b rob and antonio gibson debate like who's going to be the guy it, it seemed like you know, Gibson had back-to-back RB1 seasons. Gibson was just like the new hot commodity after uh, RIP Darius Geis. You know, oh. <laughs> dude, that was that was wild. Uh, Gibson just he was handed the reins, looked good, man. Looked like it was his team. And then all of a sudden, they they, they drafted B Rob. I believe it was a third-round pick, and it was like uh, if if Washington neglected the running back position for at least like one or two more rounds, it seemed like Gibson was in the clear. But they landed B Rob. He got so much hype. You know, he was he was unreal at Alabama in his final season. He he had some disgusting numbers. I think he had like over 15 touchdowns. It, he just he was a monster, man. And um, you know, unfortunately, they had that wild turn of events. The the got horrible, shot in the leg. Yeah, the horrible situation. And it looked like Gibson came out had a strong week one. And then B-Rob eventually made his way back, man. Like he, I think he came out to many men, and it was like, oh my, this kid, can't <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like this kid, easy RB one, like, 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 like move over Bijan, move over uh, JT. Like, like B-Rob is the RB one in Dynasty. After I saw him come out to that song, but um, now getting back to the debate, uh, I like Gibson too, man. Gibson's a good player. He was like a Swiss Army knife out of Memphis. Like he was someone who could do it all. He was, you know, he was catching passes as a receiver primarily. He only had, you know, a handful of rushing attempts, and and then gets in the NFL and just produces right away. Uh, I'm to tell you all the truth, I'm not the biggest fan of Ron Rivera. I know he had success in Carolina. He really has not been impressive in Washington. 
How do, how do you guys feel about Ron? It's yeah. surprising he still has a job. Did you know that Antonio Gibson had more <laughs> catches than he did carries in Memphis? It's a long, yeah. long running, a long running joke on the podcast. There, uh, it was like seventy four to seventy three, I think, or seventy two yeah. to seventy three. Um, it was like one off, but. But the Ron Rivera, when you were talking earlier, I was going to say, and Ron, you know, if it's if it's not going well, he's the first he's the first ripcord they're pulling. I, I can't believe he's still there. Yeah, I, I can't believe he's still Why? wearing transition flames. I don't know. I don't understand what's going well, on really with this fucking glasses. Lenses. But he's just. I think they had to have the stability because <laughs> they don't have the stability in that top office. So I yeah, mean, I, I honestly really think that. I think that he's he's sticking around because of circumstance, not morality because clause. of performance. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and now they're now they're shifting owners which is 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 are they positive have this has it happened it seems it get seems them out like, of there seems likely um and now you bring the enemy in which you know could re, re, oh, re yeah revitalize that whole thing um so you know i don't really know what to make of brian robinson and gibson i've been drafting gibson over brian robinson um is that how y'all feel that's how i feel it's uh it's close um I've shifted to Gibson. I've always been a fan of him. And, I, I, dude, he's had some – I don't want to fall for it. He's had some crazy hype so far from some of the reports. I don't want to fall for it, but, like, I think I actually believe it. I don't even have a good reason or, like, a good narrative to to necessarily follow. I just believe it, man. I, I, I believe in Gibson. I believe in the player. And I think they're going to finally utilize him correctly. You've seen it before. That's why you could believe it because you've seen him take 20 right. carries. You've seen him bust off long runs. He's you've big, seen him man. do and, it. And, and you know, maybe we should just get rid of, which they did get rid of McKissick, which is nice for Gibson. Yeah. And maybe we should just throw it to the guy who was a fucking college receiver. It's a crazy, you know, idea there, but maybe we should just throw it to that guy. I don't know. It's wild. Yeah, I think the hard thing is, I, I mean, if you look at the actual stats at the end, uh, at the end of it, right, Gibson is is – normally leading in most of those most of those categories right like mm -hmm. you know if you put him right up against brian robinson i mean he's he didn't have that horrible of a season last year it just felt like it because i think the expectation was too high right the expectation swell on gibson coming out and that uh that stank that was on him there for a while but stank. um <laughs> i think what did he end up last year he was uh yeah i think he was like 26 or something between in weeks one through 17 mm -hmm. uh, not including 18 and so i'm loving gibson this year I, I i think when we talk about looking for values he's in my book he's he's value and he's set up i think to maybe not be in washington but i do think he's set up to have um life in the nfl after this year as well so it'll be interesting to see who be enemy favors and how he calls that offense and, and to see kind of what happens um but brian robinson right now for us is rb 34 11 1 in our adp and uh gibson is 12 1 so separated by a round rb 37 so everybody would favor the round difference right now yeah gibson was yeah. second on that, Gip, that yeah gibson was 12 1 robinson was 11 1 yeah i would definitely austin no i i agree oh, it's so nice that jd mckissick is gone like, <laughs> it, it really is I, I hope that they can put two brain cells together and just utilize both running backs how they should be. Let B Rob get a lot of rushing attempts and just have, uh, you know, Gibson catch passes. I would love to have a three down back there, but I don't necessarily think that's going to happen as much as I want to see it. But yeah, fellas, you guys want to pivot over to the receivers for Washington? Well, let's, um, let's, hey, let's throw a few guys up against Antonio Gibson since it seemed like he was a little bit of more of the favorite over Robinson here. Would you rather have Sam Howell or Antonio Gibson in a super flex startup? Mm. I think you got to take the quarterback. Yeah, you probably have to. I can't yeah. see him even – honestly, I can't see him looking at Antonio Gibson right there. Uh, like Elijah Moore, if he's on the board, I want him. Uh, if Chig, I'm probably taking Chig. Uh, Trey McBride, Tajay Spears. I'm looking at those guys. I can't see him looking at Antonio. And we're talking Gibson. tight end premium here. Sure, sure. Always got to at least 1.5. You know, let me get a little half point. Uh, Big D. Uh, Go ahead, Austin. Um, doesn't Sam Howell have some sneaky rushing upside? Didn't he have over 800 rushing yards uh, the year Javante left North Carolina? Am I remembering that correctly? I don't know if he, it was 800. I, I believe he was he was pretty he, good on the ground, though. You're right. I think he was over 800. He was just like, dude, I'll do it myself. And he uh, you know, kind of balled out that year. But, I, yeah, I would probably have to go Sam Howell there, man. It, the quarterbacks are just too, value, too valuable. And if you believe in them, right, especially in a super flex league, like if, if they actually do hit, I mean, you would look like a fool taking Antonio Gibson one or two years from now, you know, over um, 
Sam Howell. I would take Sam Howell with trying to trade Sam Howell. I guess I'm not I'm trying to. I don't even want to really see what happens this year with Sam Howell. I, I don't want either one of those guys. I I don't really want much to do with the, with the Commanders. I mean, I want I want Dotson. We haven't got to Dot. We haven't got to the wider. We'll get to the receivers yet. in a second. Like I, I just man, I'm I'm looking at other like Antonio Gibson or Tyler Lockett. Like I'm probably going Lockett. You know, I'm probably trying to take those points that I know are going to be there. And Gibson's. It's not like I think he's 25. It's not like he's even got some youth that I can like lean on. He's got a pretty decent injury history and not that great of an offense that he's on. So I just, I used to be very gung ho about Antonio Gibson. Love this man. Like I'm in and we all were, but I just, I just, I don't, I'm not feeling it now. Big D Hal or Gibson. Um, in a vacuum, I'm taking Hal, but in a, in a startup, I probably, I might be leaning Gibson. Same. Um, depending on how my, how my build's going, right? Like yeah. if, if I'm looking to win, um, I'm probably taking Gibson. If I'm looking to value draft, then I'm, I'm probably taking Hal. So, um, not, not to cop out on, on, on how my team's constructed, but, right. but I, I really think that that matters, um, in, in that particular scenario. I, th- I think, um. I think it's an interesting discussion, and I completely understand the quarterback dilemma. Howell's is being drafted as quarterback thirty-eight right now for us, um, but I, w- I would I would also take Gibson. I know you can trade potentially trade Howell. We just we just really don't know, um, and I, I think we don't know what's going to happen with Gibson either. So it is it is a little dicey. The value makes a little bit more sense on the Howell side, but I'm, I think I'm taking Gibson. If so. Two more guys that are right around there, and we can pivot to the wide receivers then. Rashi Rice and Marvin Mims are right there uh, for us. So let's say we're at, you know, 2 8 or 2 7 in a, in a rookie draft. Would you, rather, would you rather draft Mims or Rice or trade that pick for Antonio Gibson? I would prefer Marvin Mims over all three players. Uh, he's someone that I, I really like his profile. I like his size. I like his production. Um, to be honest with you guys, I actually like his landing spot. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a hot take, but um, I think it was extremely telling that Sean Payton, the new head coach in, in Denver, his very first pick in, the, th- in uh, the final pick of the second round was Marvin Mims. So, like, dude, it's kind of wheels up. Like, everything makes sense. It feels like uh, Cortland Sutton, who at this point is probably being faded too far. He's probably kind sure. of value when, when, when you really think about Cortland Sutton today. But I, I'm a firm believer Judy is a great player. He is the one. But, dude, I think it's going to be closer than you think. I think Marvin Mims can really compete to be the two there. Yeah, I think it might take a minute, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drafting the shit out of Cortland Sutton. But um, I, I mostly agree. I don't mind Mims, but I, I, I think I'm – I don't know. Uh, uh, Big D, what do you think? Yeah, I'm Gibson over both of them. Um, I'm I'm close on Mims, but but um, I, again, I think it just the way that I play um, and the way that I build my teams, I think I would be I, I I think I would be going Gibson most of the time in in that spot. I feel like you couldn't get a mid second for Gibson right now. It's close. You know? I'm saying, like, if I'm, I'm just so I'm saying, taking, if, I'm taking Mims and Rice, you know. Well, they're they're all right here in ADP. I know it um, seems, and it's I, probably Big D right there taking them in. I'd be, I'd be <laughs> fine. I'm kind of with Big D. I'd be fine with trading in in for Gibson there. I'll I'll take the shot, and then I I think for going back to Sam Howell, like I would, if Sam Howell hits, like I'd rather just not take the risk there, and I'll trade for Sam Howell if he becomes something awesome. I'll take the I'll take the L there and trade in. For how if I if I start watching and go oh there's a little Kenny Pickett in there uh, that I like uh, <laughs> uh, near the end of the year and he's looking <laughs> and he's looking good uh, I'll trade in and get me some Sam Howell but I'm not going to assume the risk there and I, I you know there is some risk with Gibson too because we don't know but I, I from what I've seen I've really liked um, and I think he's he's better than than what he's been dealt and what the end results have been so i'm going to stay with gibson all right let's get to the wide receiver side of things bring us bring us in on the wide receivers here uh austin so if there was one player that i had to buy on this team it's Jahan dotson he had the second most uh receiving touchdowns as a rookie i believe man he is the fact that what do you go 16th overall right he went to a place called penn state i don't know if you guys are familiar with it (laughs) sure is that where you went (laughs) <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. Matt. <laughs> yeah. Our apologist hear, isn't here. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I just always hear him going off about Penn State. Um, anyway, I'm a huge fan, man. Jahan Dotson's kind of someone who is faded 
heavily in the dynasty rookie drafts last year. It was kind of like the cool, sexy thing to do to take George Pickens over him. And even like, even like James Cook, man, I saw him going over Jahan Dotson. I'm like, that's just a horrible process. That's, that's a bad thought process. And you Shots know, fired. It, it, it is, man. I, I value draft cap greatly. Like when you're taking someone 16th overall compared to uh, James Cook, who was, you know, he's never had 15 touches in a single or whatever, 15 rushing attempts in a single game in in college or the NFL. It's, dude, I, sorry. You call that crazy. high tread. <laughs> I just, yeah, man. Just, I'm with you though. Bothered. I'm with you though. I don't mean to. No, no, it bothered me. Um, but but Dotson, someone I should have been even higher on than I was initially. He's a good player. I'm a big fan of him, and I, I just I think big things are coming, man. If I'll tell you what, like like we we had this all all this quarterback talk about Sam Howell. If he can't produce with these two superstar receivers, and, and I, I understand Dotson's not a superstar yet. I think he's going to be. I think he's going to be really solid. And of course, the other receiver being Terry McLaurin, who's just been who's phenomenal. Re- re- dude, he's really been phenomenal from yeah. day one. Like, like talk about a, a hell of an ROI. What an awesome pick by Washington. Yeah, no, I, I, we, we're, we've been big Dotson proponents on this podcast. Um, he just, he gets open, he does this thing. Listen, he's good. Y'all at know contested. that he cannot keep up this rate of touchdowns. <laughs> though. like he can't score that many touchdowns. It's almost a bad thing that he scores regression. so many touchdowns. Regression drink. Um, Dotson or Hollywood Brown? Dotson. Um, dude, Hollywood is kind of underappreciated, too. I think, you know, he had that crazy, was weeks one to six prior to the injury. Mm-hmm. He was on pace for like, dude, I think he was on pace five, for like 180 I think. targets. It was something absurd. Yeah. But um, when you look at the grand scheme of things with Hollywood Brown, it's like he just has not lived up to his first round potential. Um, we, we had hoped for better numbers from him. We just really hadn't seen it aside from one year with with um, Baltimore. He barely cracked a thousand yards, but but I, I believe that. I, I it, dude, I'm just big on prospects, right? If you are a good prospect, I'm a firm believer that you have a significantly better chance at having a brighter future, right? I understand there's no perfect formula, there's no perfect science, but but I I just I like Dotson a lot, man. I yeah. do. Big D, I know you're a Hollywood guy like me. Hollywood or Dotson? Uh, that one's pretty tough for me. I, I'm I'm also a very big uh, Dotson fan. Yeah. I, we haven't had our draft in Patreon three, but I traded what ended up you know, humble brag, um, the 112. Um, I think I'd take that all day in this <laughs> this year. Um, I, I think for from Hollywood, it, I don't know. I it's really close. I, I think I would still lean Hollywood just because I think he has the the um, the clear path to performance. Um, because I don't know what how and or insert quarterback into the Washington offense. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. And, um, and, and I do agree that he's a, he's a great talent, but I, I don't know if he's, um, he's at least on par with uh, McLaren, um, scary Terry. So I, 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 I don't know if they can um, performance wise, if, if Washington could handle loading up those, those wide receivers. Like when we look at Hollywood Brown, that's what I'm comparing him to. Mm-hmm. Like it, the target has evaporated in there with uh, Hopkins gone. So I'd go Hollywood. Yeah. How many passing yards is Clayton Tune going to throw for big D? <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I, I think he'll probably play the, probably the first, maybe the first quarter, uh, you know, so two or three <laughs> games. So uh, the first three games or so. So yeah. I don't know, 600. Yeah, I think that's the only thing that makes you slightly hesitant. Me slightly hesitant on Hollywood is that you may you you may not get Kyler, and if you do, it might be a little bit of a slow start. But if not, I think he I think Hollywood would be blowing the doors off of the PPR ceiling uh, throughout the season. There, there's so. also a three year difference. Dotson sure, being sure. twenty three and, and Marquise being but 26. If, if Marquise is tied to Holly, if they re-sign Marquise and he's tied to Hollywood for three more years, I mean, I, I think that there's just, I think that's a hundred catch. That's an, that could be a hundred catches if both are healthy for three years, man. I'm not going to pretend to know anything that's about to happen with Kyler Murray or the future of the Arizona sure. Cardinals, you know, like it would point to wor- worst teams and that Kyler, Kyler will be and- their guy and Holly, maybe they re-sign Hollywood to keep him happy. So 
Or or they could move on from. Kyler, they certainly could. You know? if, but like we'll they moved see. on from that coach. It's like all kind of crumbling there. I don't know what's going on in Hollywood or in, in Arizona. And I don't really know what's going on in okay. Washington either. So worst case scenario, Caleb Williams is now throwing him Hollywood Brown. All right. If like, they sign him and keep yeah. him, you know, I mean, what what kind of contract is Mark Hollywood on? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that. I think if you're, I don't know that the Cardinals are going to be the worst team. They might be. Um, so it just I, depends on how fast it takes Kyler Murray to heal. And, well, they're, they're just not a very good roster. Yeah. Um, but if if Kyler was there, I don't even care about the roster. I think Hollywood and him already have a connection. You saw it, like you said in the beginning. I yeah. think he was wide receiver five uh, to lead, start the season and through the first six games or whatever, and the targets were bananas, and he was awesome. With all uh, that being said, I don't know how it works out for Do- – I'm with Big D. I don't know how it works out for Dotson and Even McLaurin. we all love them. With Sam Howell. I love both of those players, but how is this going to work out? Yeah. It, it, it's well, not. Let's pivot to Howell. It can't let's work pi- out. Let's, let's pivot to McLaurin then. Do, do you have anything on t- Terry, any further on Terry, or what's your thoughts? He's just underappreciated. Uh, dude, I dug into him recently. I kind of feel like he's the almost same exact player in terms of production as T. Higgins, but he's cheaper, right? Um, Mm -hmm. If you look at the numbers, it's uh, alarmingly close, but he's always going later. And like when you just think of the two players, it's like, oh, T. Higgins, easy. But it's like, again, look at the numbers. And and then think about the situation. Like one is Joe Burrow. (laughs) One has, uh, I don't even know who's going to be the quarterback a year from today, you know, like uh, we don't know. We don't know what Sam Howell is going to do. So uh, Terry's just done nothing but succeed in this league. And he had just under 1,200 yards this year. Um, I Maybe it'll be beneficial that he has a very good number two now. Maybe he will not be double covered as much. Um, you know, maybe the defense will just have to simply focus on someone else other than Terry. But, it, dude, it, it just it seems like it hasn't been an issue for him because all he's done is produce year in and year out with, you know, with all that double coverage. With, with yeah, the defense I agree. And not him, much so. a quarterback either. So I'm yeah. knocking him yeah. for the quarterback this year, but I just don't, you know. And then when you're looking at T, he's three years younger than Terry and could be. Also, I think Terry is a number one. He's a one. He you is, know, you, you, you have to guard him. I think Dotson benefits from having Terry out there. Like, I think you I think have the, to account for F1. I think the takeaway is if he had anywhere near the quarterback, he'd be putting up better numbers than T. Higgins. I think he'd be up there in this two, top three rounds, Terry McLaurin. I think he'd be just if he had, slight, a, Joe if he, if he had a Joe team. Burrow quarter, type quarterback that he for the last three years. I think Terry would be up in the top three rounds. Um, I think he's that good. I can't disagree. All that being said, I don't want anything to do with Terry. Oh, I do. I do for sure. Um, He still produces. He's even without a quarterback. He's been fine. Like he's not, it's not like he's not crushing, but like you said, his numbers are fairly similar to what T Higgins has been putting up over the last little bit here. Um, They're like slightly slightly better over the past three years. And like, granted, he came into the league a year earlier than uh, T Higgins, but I mean, uh, shit, he finished better than T Higgins, which is that's the overall number. And and I think, he didn't miss very much time, maybe one game. So Terry was over there, fourteen the PPR overall and standard. With All right, these. so I got I got a question to wrap up the, the Terry discussion here. I, every draft I'm in, if I'm on the back half of it, it seems like I'm I'm left with the question of: Do I draft Zay Flowers, Terry Godwin? Or Hollywood. Every sing, almost every draft, I'm faced with that question. If I'm if I'm drafting like one, if I'm drafting the nine to ten to eleven to twelve spot, I, I feel like I get to the point in a draft where I'm all, it's almost I get to the turn there and I'm faced with those four in my face. Um, do you guys have a, an answer to that question? So it was Zay Flowers, Chris Godwin, um, Scary Terry, and Hollywood Brown. I think Terry and Godwin are a tier above the other two players. I think there's a big tier gap. Um, God, dude, Godwin's a stud, man. He, yeah. is, he is someone who I would like to apologize to if I ever see him because I was I was mm. very wrong on him. Also especially. from the Penn State yeah. University. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, um, not the. We are. Yeah. Yeah, man. Early, <laughs> early on in his career, I was. Uh, I don't even have a good reason, but I, I was not an advocate. I was not a fan of his and. Man, he has just been one of the most underappreciated, underrated players in the league. Like I think he just dropped over 103 receptions and came into the season limping super, around. Super yeah, banged up. yeah, super, limping super around. Banged up. And dude, he just balled out. I think I think again, if if 
if Godwin had a clear quarterback situation, I don't think that you can get him in these areas. So that's what's keeping Terry and Godwin here, which is makes you th- like I don't I think I agree with you. I think talent wise and such situ- like where they've been, I think you could potentially put those guys in a tier above. But I mean Baker Mayfield and Trask and not knowing what the quarterback situation holds in the future for Gotta Godwin. Go Zay Flowers. It's it makes me it makes I don't because I, I agree. I don't think that that would be a hard question if God, I don't think it would be a question because I don't think Godwin would be available if if mm. there was a quarterback there. But so that's what makes me uh you know be a little befuddled there big d do you have a, an answer to that question godwin would probably be probably behind terry for me um so hollywood terry godwin zay um but i i honestly if that was my wide receiver room on my team i'd be happy with it. <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like if yeah. i could get those guys and and not have a quote-unquote number one um i think they're those guys are number ones lurking in the shadows right like mm-hmm. like we were just saying so so to me i'm um I'm I'm happy with all those players, but but if you know the top spot, I think I still would go Hollywood. All right, I think I gotta put Zay at the top. Woo! Like all these other dudes are like 26. Just just like just checking if you had a rookie fever over there. I don't I, know. I, I, I mean, I got, I got a Zay. I got a Zay Flowers I fever did. for sure. The only answer is more more, more cowbell. Yeah. yeah, I mean, shit. Like my man's like. It's just the, it's a five year age difference, you know, and it's a fresh new object in it. And that Zay well, Flowers. Well, what's the warp say? Put on my black headband and call myself Scott Connors. <laughs> the warp, the <laughs> win over. Expected. Shout out to Scott Connors. He's, he's guys, guys crushing it out Efficiency there. Efficiency is definitely on the board. You got to drink you say that. Or over expected. We don't get too much over expected, but. Uh, yeah. If you, that's definitely a trigger word for yeah, drinking. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I mean, it just makes, like, they don't have quarterbacks. You know, maybe Marquise does. They're all 26. Like, they're going to be 27 by the time anyone even makes Saying it their Zay mind doesn't about have a quarterback. Flowers. No, no. Zay's the only one that does. Mm. Zay's the youngest one. Zay's got the name, Zay. highest ceiling in terms of a dynasty asset value. Like The show just can't quit guys named Zay. I'm telling you. Yeah. Shout out to the podfather. Um, <laughs> Austin, you got anything else on the Redskins or the uh, Commanders? Jesus. God, bless America. Hey. Easy, man. A lot of people are going to be triggered about that. Yeah. Um, Not just efficiency. <laughs> uh, no, man. I I mean, Jahan Dotson, someone I'm buying. Terry, I think, is a screaming hold. Uh, or a, if you could buy, I would like to, but I, I think he's buyable. Uh, he's definitely uh, yeah. buyable. He, he are probably, you saying Bible or viable? Yeah. Buyable. <laughs> and, um, but, but Gibson, if I were to sell one player, I would, I would like for Gibson in a perfect world to succeed like early on and then hopefully maybe you can get like i don't know man an early second in 2024 maybe i don't know maybe maybe you could get a little bit more who who knows man now right now nobody cares about gibson i'm surprised his adp is as high as it is in this thing yeah Yeah. i feel like it's starting to change man i feel like people are getting a little bit back in on gibson buzz he's getting buzz yeah he's buzzing up had a couple of wine coolers get a little buzz. Remember uh, wine coolers? Uh, that was like um, when I was little, my mom drank. No, shout out to uh, Curtis Samuel, who I also think hurts this core because the quarterback situation hasn't been great enough. And I think Curtis Samuel has been, is good enough to get some targets. And if the enemy is scheming properly, I think he's a gadget kind of guy who can be schemed well. If Curtis is, is healthy, he's also a pretty decent wide receiver. Uh, not anything sexy. He's super late. Uh, I think they have one more year and then they might have an out or I don't, I'm not 100% sure of the contract. Um, but Curtis Samuel, I think, hurts a little bit of both of those guys because I do think he can uh, grab some targets. I know when Wentz was in there, Curtis Samuel was was hurting those guys a little bit because he was a favorite of Wentz's. Um, and we never know. We talk about this all the time on the show. We don't know who Sal, uh, Howell is going to favor. Um, and shit, it could be fucking... Curtis, because that's the easiest matchup for him, you know, or that's where he likes in progressions or whatever. Anyway, I just wanted to mention him real quick. Um, and then the tight end position is pretty bleak over there. Logan Thomas has, has had a pretty uphill battle with injury. He came back at the end of last season, but for a free tight end at the end of this, at the end of the, at the end of your draft and tight end premium, he may not be the bad. Is, is Jesse Bates their other tight end? Oh, John Bates. John Bates. All you right. almost had it. So close. So close. All right. We appreciate you. I'm impressed, actually. Like, I. (laughs) John Bates. 
Sometimes you had right. Bates right. Yeah. Sometimes you're right around the hole, but you can't quite get it in. So are you too good yeah, you're for the your master hole? when it comes to that? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we appreciate you guys, Austin. Good job. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, man. Um, appreciate we'll, it. We'll uh, be sure to follow him at Austin FF on the Twitters and all social media platforms. Um, and we'll be back with Big D's uh, breakdown of the G Men. Hit that like, subscribe, noty button. For notifications, if you didn't know what Nodi means. Yeah. Just wanted to reiterate that. Appreciate y'all for joining us. Peace.